Hi, I'm Nikki Buckley and welcome to Talk to the Animals. Now, you know they say that good things come in small sizes. Well, what a gorgeous little package is Poncho here. He's a cross Shetland and miniature horse. And I tell you what, my boys would have a lot of fun with you, buddy. He eats quite a bit for a little one too, doesn't he? This week, a double challenge for Dr Chris with Bad Little Bucks and Jono. He just seems that terrified that I can't be out of his sight. Wrangler Jane shows the gentle way to handle horses. Good, sweetie. And Good it's a battle of wills for Blue the Dingo. Okay, this is what we call the SOS Dr Chris segment. It's where we deal with emails and letters about pesky pets and their problems that are driving their owners up the wall. Just take a listen to this. Bucks loves watching TV, but every time any type of animal appears on the screen, he goes crazy, growling, barking, uncontrollable. And then there's Jono, terrified of the baseball coach, shaking, barking, and even wetting himself if the coach comes near. And with both dogs in the same house, Dr Chris, I really need your help. Yep, separate problems, under one roof. This is gonna be quite a challenge. Marita Taylor is the frustrated owner of these two little monsters. In public, they're angels. It's at home that the fun begins. Let's see problem number one. Jono in action when Marita's friend Tony arrives. Hey, how are you? What's happening? Tony is Marita's baseball coach, and off the field, they're good mates as well. But Jono clearly isn't a fan. They just don't get along at all. But Tony's a good guy. He is a great guy. But for some reason, Jono... Jono just doesn't like him. Tony drops in regularly, but imagine this commotion non-stop every time he visits. You'll go behind a chair and just make sure that I'm in view all the time, that he just seems that terrified that I can't be out of his sight. So what could have set off this change in behaviour? The only thing we can think of, there was one day they were coming to our house and it took them three hours to get here because they got lost on the way. And um, when Tony got out of the car, he just sort of threw his arms up in the air and said, oh, it's taken us so long to get here. Yeah, in that instance, it was just, you know, a bit of showmanship and way out the car and God, and that was it. Tony's a premiership baseball coach, but with Jono, he's definitely on a losing streak. Now, I thought we'd come out here because this is what I refer to as the scene of the crime. This is where it all happened. I have to stress, when Tony turned up late that day, he'd had a can of drink, but as a passenger, that one can was enough to make him, well, a little bit noisy. Now, the thing about alcohol is it changes us. Jono was used to Tony being Tony, sounding a certain way, moving a certain way, smelling a certain way. And when you put on that show at the front of the car, all of a sudden Jono was like, hang on, is this the same guy? So now whenever you come into the house, he's immediately on the back foot and very wary of you. So that means I've got to give up drinking? <laughs> no, I think we can actually still get away with those one or two drinks oh. and be best mates with Jono. But we need to stop this <laughs> before you lose both your ankles. <laughs> Tony's a good bloke and he sincerely wants to mend the rift with Jono. And this is a remedy they'll both enjoy. Take that, on your way. One super long lead is Get all we need. We need to establish the comfort distance between you, Tony, and Jono here. Jono's a bit wary of this new setup. And then over time, we decrease that distance. And as we do that, we build up that trust that Jono has for Tony because he's out in the park, he's having a great old time. He's enjoying himself, so he begins to associate Tony with fun, with exercise, and with interaction, but most importantly, with trust. So decrease the distance, increase the trust. Hold on. Hold on, Good. Good idea. Now, Tony, this is something special. You are an animal person after all. <laughs> Maybe. I think, I think you want him over. Yep, just a short space of time and you might have found the trick. One session with you and it's all turned around. The coach coaching the coach, huh? <laughs> yep, I'll have to tip my hat to you. <laughs> so one happy ending. 
I'll be back to try to sort out problem number two with Bucks later in the show. Hey, you know, best mates now, eh? That's the way it's going to be. That's great. Getting things up on Woolworth's Pet of the Week is Lucy, a snuggly, cuddly, perfect puppy, especially when it comes to snoozing with her big brother, Fez. Next up, check out this bovine beauty. We think Bambi is a Jersey cow who's utterly horrible. Blink and you might miss it. We're told Butch is a master escapist. Yep, he sure is. But this week's winner is Bambi. How could we resist a friendly family cow? A $300 Woolworths voucher is on its way. And don't forget to send us your prized pet pics and home videos. Check out our website for more details. OK, Jane Glenn, ever heard that name before? Well, I know these guys have. And I reckon Jane could be the inspiration behind one of Hollywood's biggest blockbusters. Move over Robert Redford. Wrangler Jane is a real life horse whisperer. So Jane, are you the modern day horse whisperer? <laughs> well, the modern day, I would say in a way, yes. Even though I don't usually go around calling myself a mm -hmm. horse whisperer, people understand when I say horse whispering what I mean. And it's that gentle image that goes with the horse handling that is known as horse whispering. Wrangler Jane's talent to communicate with horses led her to start a program called Horsemanship with Heart. It's all about developing a relationship with the horse based on trust, confidence and mutual respect. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to touch them all over. This is letting our horse know we're not going to hurt him. Rub the, rope. the training is done mostly at ground level. It really is about getting to know the whole horse from front to back. Heart's racing. Oh. I'm loving this, buddy, because I'm not. <laughs> oh, he thinks this is pretty good. I oh, know, that was a bit nerve-wracking. <laughs> <laughs> just from all the years of being told, mm -hmm. don't go behind the horse, don't mm -hmm. go behind the horse. So that's right, and that's what people it's think. It's scary, yeah. And as a result of that, horses get frights, because mm. when somebody does go back there, they go, oh no, who's there? Yeah. And they get a fright and they react. I'll take a deep breath now. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Seems I'm onto something because breathing is one of Jane's biggest tools of communication. Now, if I'm walking with him, I can just walk, use my breathing, and he'll stop. So, we're getting our horse to mirror our body language because horse language is body language. The horses it. also get a few valuable lessons. Pretty sure he's not scared. Jane teaches them how to handle some of the horrors of the human world. And most importantly, how to keep out of our personal space. Put some energy in front of him. Please move back, Esteban. Yep, there you go. And relax. And that's good. He'll probably... The Wrangler Jane magic has definitely rubbed off on the class. So, Ros, you've done a few of these classes before. Have you started implementing it with your own horses? Absolutely. I've been doing one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions with Jane and the difference is amazing. What's going on here with spirit? <laughs> well, Spirit's a wild brumbery and he's wild. He's cheeky. He's the wild eater of the carrot stick. Oh, back off. Back off, Spirit. <laughs> yeah, come on. Back off. Back. Say like, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's always one. There's always one. Cheeky. My day isn't over. I'm lucky to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Jane for the final lesson. Riding. How am I going to jump up there? <laughs> Stretch them long legs. <laughs> oh, Lord. Here we go. First of all, breathe in. Smile with all your cheeks. A bit of a squeeze. Look where like him to go. Oh, I've got a little bit there. Come on, a little that's bit a there, bit. And Yay. off you go. Just sit there and relax. That's good. <laughs> boom, ba -da -da, Just walk boom, with it. <laughs> Hooray! Movement at okay. the station. It really is about working as a partnership more than the traditional control approach. He's like, good to check that out. <laughs> good. There now seems out. nothing Jane can't do. She's even managed to solve one of the biggest problems of horse owners, float loading. So everything I do is geared around 
developing the horse so that he gives you permission to do things. And I so, guess to leading him into his trailer. That's right, and I want the horse's permission to put him in a trailer. I don't want to tie a horse up and bang the door shut. So, it's float time. We're going. Load up. There's no doubt that Wrangler Jane has an amazing talent with horses. The most rewarding thing of what I do is to see that moment where the human and the horse connect. And it is a moment that is so profound that everybody's in tears. Yeah. And the arms go around the horse and the horse's head comes down and mm. it's just wonderful, very emotional. Now it's a well-known fact that cats don't like water. So can you still bath them? Well, yes you can, but the trick is you have to start them young. First, make sure the water is warm, but not hot. Just as you would with a baby, test it on yourself first. For cats, a quick bath is most certainly a good bath. The key is don't make the water too deep, just enough to cover the feet. That way, they won't lose confidence or get freaked out and try to swim to safety. Make sure water doesn't get into your cat's ears, as this can all too easily lead to infection. If you do have a cat like Sophie that, well, doesn't love the whole idea, maybe a warm sponge might be a better option. And of course, treats and cuddles will make the whole experience a lot more pleasurable for you and your wet mate. Seven, stripes, come on. Come on, Boris, where are you? Get here, come on. Jill and Dick Ryachuk aren't your ordinary run-of-the-mill farmers. For a start, there's their sheep, Wilshire Horns, a relatively rare English breed in Australia, renowned for shedding their wool rather than needing to be shorn. They're a very hardy breed, uh, and so we sort of treat them like like we used to treat the cows, you know, they do very little to them and they seem to do very well. They, they graze as well as browse. And does it fall off, obviously, just as summer comes along, wool falls off, grows back again for winter? Or? Yeah, some of them shed two, three times a year, yeah, and some of them only, only once. Now, this is the wonderful world of the Wilshire horns. Now, Dick has very graciously <laughs> volunteered it. to... Uh, Hold on to this one for us because they aren't, don't really like being handled, do no, they? Well, they're... they don't need to be. They don't need to be flipped over to be crutched. So or they're really, really like handled that. by humans, is it? Yeah. So, <laughs> and you can see how the fleece is coming out already. It just falls right. out when it's ready to come out. No need for um, shearing. And the wool's obviously the no wool use. The wool is of no use. Birds like it for, Birds their, love for nesting. It, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to knit a jumper when I get home. No, I don't. <laughs> You'll be going a long way to find <laughs> enough wool. A pair of undies. Now, given how uh, strong-willed they are, you must have a good sheep dog. Uh, <laughs> well, we're trying to train one, <laughs> but uh, I don't know about the good yet. But <laughs> I'll go this way. Come on, come blue. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Jill's Perfect. sheep aren't run of the mill, and neither's her sheepdog. In fact, he's a dingo called Blue. Uh, 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 stop. Jill and Dick breed dingoes, 30 of them in fact, on their Violet Town property in central Victoria. Jill's convinced with plenty of patience, Blue can overcome his instincts and become a good sheepdog. But it's a very slow process. Uh, 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 stop. Boy. Especially when certain sheep don't realise yeah. that it's meant to be Blue who bosses them around. That's the one that beat him up ages ago. The problem is he can't bark though, can he? No. Did you hear me when I was going, ho, ho, ho? Oh, you're trying to teach him to bark. No, no, no. I'm making the sound so the ah. sheep think it's him. So that's the only way that we can get... And you've also got a breed of sheep that pays very little respect to dogs. That's exactly right, yes. Uh, he's, he's behind you... the eight ball from the start. Blue. That's why sometimes it's better for the role of the sheep to be played by something less intimidating, like a small tree. And by using your arm in different directions sort of thing, he'll uh, 
He'll learn which way you mean to go. What's, Look, what have you got him doing there? That well, he's like just put himself down as a drop. That's him lazing around, that's right, him, okay. Yeah, come on, sit up. After another day's hard training, Blue returns to the dingo enclosure to tell his mates about rounding up trees and being bullied by sheep who don't know their place. Did you know that the seahorse is classified as a fish? But unlike fish, they have no scales, teeth or stomach. To avoid predators, these smart sea dwellers often change colour to match their surroundings. The seahorse is also a master mover. The pectoral fins on the side of the face control turning and steering, while propulsion comes from small dorsal fins. A seahorse has every angle covered able to move its eyes independently so each eye can look in different directions. And out of the entire animal kingdom, these are the only animals in which the male gives birth to the babies. Good on you, boys. Earlier in the show, we sorted out the rift between Tony and Jono. I'm confident they'll soon be best mates again. OK, problem number two. Now, I've heard of television critics, but apparently, Bucks, you're something else. It's like they sit there and watch it, and as soon as he sees an animal, he's up and he's out of his chair and barking at the screen. With a state-of-the-art home theatre system, it's easy to see that Marita enjoys a TV, but definitely not with this racket. Do you think he's scared or do you think he's excited? I think more exciting, because if you're scared, I think you'd probably run away rather than trying to attack them. Marita is at her wit's end. She doesn't want to banish Bucks outside. She wants to enjoy the television with both her little housemates in peace. Now, this must impact upon your television watching. It does, definitely. It gets very frustrating and we can't just sit back and enjoy a nice movie when there's animals in it. Now, I notice you've got a fish tank here. Any response to the fish tank? No, he actually pays no attention to the fish at all. Not a fish man, huh? Now, I also noticed that you have a moose in the house. A talking moose in the house. Does Bucks respond to the talking moose? No, not at all. Not a thing. So, the fish are OK, and so is Mr Moose. Any particular animal that he takes exception to, or...? Uh, horses and dogs are probably his favourite, but yeah, it can be any animal. Hi, I'm Nikki Buckley, and welcome. So really, the way to look at it is that Bucks, in a way, is a victim of his own eyesight. His eyesight is so good that the animals almost seem real. Yeah. And because it seems so real, he obviously has to bark at them to get rid of the animals because he sees them as being a threat to you and to the house. So how do we get around it? Well. The thing about animals on TV for him is that it, it's actually a novelty to see them. And understandably, he gets very worked up, very excited. What we need to do is make animals on TV not so exciting for him. And what I'm talking about is playing a DVD like this over and over again, show after show. So he, all he sees is animals time after time. So your job, just press play and walk away. <laughs> Yes, it's going to be a very noisy household, but Bucks will soon settle down when he realises those screen animals are just that and don't pose any threat. Now, OK, boys, I'm expecting the best of behaviour. Now, no more bad reports. Deal. Hi, I'm Dr Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.